Hey scholars, welcome to our uh, next segment of biology and we're looking at macromolecules. These are very, very important because they make up a majority, actually almost everything that's inside of us, uh, make up all organic tissues. So we're going to take a look at what macromolecules are. Let's start for our first start with the prefix of the word macro molecules and macro means larger okay macro means larger micro means smaller and obviously miles so we're, we're talking about quite a bit larger molecules overall so before we even do that we got to talk about carbon now there's just there's a lot of background information on carbon not necessarily you need to know anything about this with carbon but the one thing i do want to share with you from this slide is that carbon is found in all living things we're called carbon-based life forms for a reason um, and, and they basically everything that has carbon, I shouldn't say everything that has carbon is living, but everything that is living has carbon. Um, it also makes up things that are non-living, like one of the most valuable jewels in the world is made up of pure carbon, in this case diamonds. There's a bunch of extra information about diamonds. Um, but, but there's that is what I really want you to take away is that carbon is found in all living things. Okay? All right. So there are three types of carbon bonds as well that makes uh, the bonds. The bonds are really what allows diamonds to be so tough and strong. It's the type of bonds they have there. There's a couple different types. There's straight, branched, and ringed. Again, most of this you will not need to know for the EOC, but just a little extra information. And the ringed is really what makes the diamonds so strong. There's different elements inside of us. There's different elements that make up these organic macromolecules that we're going to talk about. And the, uh, the six that really make up uh, a majority of the, mo the, or uh, the elements inside of us are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And sometimes those call this the CHNOPs. Um, all those elements make up different organic compounds within us and specifically make up at least the major four that we're going to talk about today. So there are four principal classes of organic compounds or macromolecules. There are the carbohydrates, which are made up of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. There's also the lipids. Carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen make up lipids as well. Proteins have one extra one, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, plus nitrogen, and they got proteins. And our last one, which is nucleic acid, is a much larger molecule made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So those are our major four organic uh, macromolecules. We're going to talk about each one of these individually today. So the first one is carbohydrates, or sugars. Um, and there are a few things, I don't, I don't mention this word to you, but I wish I would have called mon, uh, monomers, which are smaller units. Mono means one. And so um, the polymer, which means many, poly means many, is the carbohydrate. So a large organic uh, you know, carbohydrate or polymer. And the small things that make up carbohydrates or the monomers are the monosaccharides. Now mono again means one. Saccharide means sugar. So basically just one sugar is basically all that means. And there's two different types. There's glucose or there's fructose. Those are monosaccharides. One simple sugars, um, example in honey and in syrup. Um, you maybe have heard of um, you know, high fructose corn syrup. That is a simple sugar monosaccharide, a monomer of a carbohydrate. Uh, disaccharide is a little bit larger. Again, mostly what you need to know is monosaccharide and it is a monomer or a smaller unit that makes up a larger polymer or a carbohydrate. But if let's take a look at other sugars that we use, disaccharides, uh, these are where di means two, so two or more sugars together, M mainly, mainly two different sugars. Maltose, sucrose, dextrose, and lactose are all types of sugars. Now, if you notice, they end with a certain suffix. They all end with O-S-E, right? Those are all means they're sugars, so that's a big giveaway for sugars. So if we take a glucose, we find another glucose, that makes maltose. That's what's the sugar that makes up Wendy's malts, which is where you've heard that before, or the... The, uh, the, yeah, the malts. Glucose plus fructose equals sucrose. That's normal table sugar. That's how we make a table sugar. And fructose plus fructose makes up dextrose, which maybe you've heard of dextrin that helps you cut that sugar and lose weight. So those are a couple of different types of a uh, little bit more complex carbohydrates, not the most complex. Once we get to polysaccharide, which means many sugars, three or more glucose molecules, Eventually, we end up making these larger, more bigger molecules called starches. This is a whole chain of glucose molecules. This is in potatoes and, and potato chips and French fries, and it's potato based. Um, it has a lot of starch in it. There's another type of carbohydrate that's also uh, a, it's a complex sugar, which is called cellulose. Again, and with O, so it's, we know it's a sugar. Um, but uh, it, we can't digest this as human beings. Actually, it's mostly in plants, and other organisms can digest it, but humans cannot. So when you see corn, and sometimes you'll eat corn, you'll look down in the toilet, which is kind of gross, and you'll see corn kernels. The kernel on the outside kernel of the corn is made up of cellulose. 
as well as the uh, stringy part in celery. So look for that the next time you, know, you got to go number two. Anyway, the next thing is uh, ATP. Another thing we're going to talk about <clears throat> throughout this semester. This is the energy currency of the cell. Again, we're going to come back to this. I don't want to spend too much time on this. But this is energy, and it has to do with organic molecules. It's made up of uh, adenosine, which is a sugar, and then tri three phosphates. So there's a couple of things we, we take. We get it from glucose. We turn it into glycogen for a little bit long-term storage and some energy. But we're going to look at ATP a little bit later. The next molecule I really want you to look at are the lipids. Now, lipids are nonpolar, which maybe you remember from physical science uh, that nonpolar uh, means that it does not dissolve in uh, in water because water is polar. Fats are nonpolar, like dissolves, like you remember that. So they don't really well, work well with uh, with water. So and this is a great example: oil spills. You see, oil spills. Oil usually sits on top of the water. The less dense is on top, or wax. Um, that you wax your car with, you watch it beat up, the water beat up and go off your car because it doesn't mix well with the wax. So made up of smaller molecules, the monomer of lipids is called a fatty acid. My favorite one to say, try to very use perfect diction or you sounds like you're swearing at somebody, but fatty acids is, uh, is, are the monomers of the complex polymer lipids. Um, a lot of lipids together make up fats or fat tissues. Uh, sat, there's two different types of fatty acids too. There's the saturated kind, which is like butter. It's solid at room temperature versus unsaturated fatty acids, which are olive oil, liquid at room temperature. The healthier the two that your body is easier to break down are the unsaturated fatty acids. They just break down already because they're already in liquid form, um, less bonds to break. Um, the, also, another, another use, usable uh, lipid part, actually the lipids are found in the phospholipid bar or the cell membrane. In every cell of your body, you have a membrane that surrounds it, and they, uh, they help up make about half of that membrane. So it's used to protect the inside and outside of the cell. Uh, again, kind of separating those two. Those are some examples of lipids. Um, another one that we're looking at is proteins. Proteins, um, their monomer uh, is an amino acid, which there's 20 different ones. I'll never make you memorize all of them, but we'll talk about them later in the semester. But amino acids make up proteins. Um, and uh, some examples are skin, ligaments, tendons, bones, muscles, all those things made up of proteins. So that's why your mom always told you to eat your meat to grow big and strong like this dude. Um, but uh, there, there's obviously valid reason for it because it makes up so much of our body mass itself. Um, weightlifters drink protein shakes to help them build more of these muscle, tendons, bones, all that stuff. Another example of a protein is it called hemoglobin. It uh, actually is in your blood and helps carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of your body to help you maneuver and move around. So those are a couple examples of proteins. Again, the monomer is the amino acid and the polymer is the protein. Our last one for today is the nucleic acid. Now, uh, it does have a monomer, which I forgot to list here, but it is called a nucleotide. So the monomer is a nucleotide, if you want to write that down, of a nucleic acid. And this is what makes up your DNA. DNA is an example of a nucleic acid. Actually, that's why the N, that's what the N and the A stand for, is nucleic acid, deoxyribose, which is the sugar, and nucleic acid. Though that's our best example of, of nucleic acid. Again, a monomer of this is a nucleotide. A nucleotide is made up of three things, a nitrogen base, which are these guys right here, the deoxyribose sugar, which is the D, and then the phosphate. So a, a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate, and one nitrogen base, which is represented in these different colors. So that's what makes up a nucleotide, the monomer of a nucleic acid. And we'll get to some of the other of these uh, later. The adenine goes to the thymine, cytosine, and guanine. We'll talk more about that later. Don't worry about that too much. Just know that the monomer of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. And what it's made up of, a deoxyribose sugar, the D, um, the, uh, the, the nitrogen base, which is the, uh, the rung on the ladder here, and then the phosphate group, which is uh, the third part of a nucleotide. All right. That's it for this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next time with more talks on cellular biology.